Hey, how's it going? Jonathan here. Just wanted to film this really short case study uh, video for you to show you how we do a property round from zero. So absolute zero, right? To around 100K uh, within 16 days. So uh, this case study is very pretty, I would say. Very nice to see because uh, the graphs uh, are very clean. It's a very, very clean scale. There's no up and down. Uh, there's no like inconsistency and stuff, right? Uh, once you scale the ad spend, uh, the, the revenue increases as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna get right back to my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly. And first, I'm gonna first, uh, you can see it's like a real account and stuff. Okay, uh, I'm gonna refresh my screen so you, you can see that it's real. There's nothing that I'm hiding. Okay, I'm gonna show you uh, ads manager later as well so that you know um, exactly uh, how to replicate uh, the, type of, the type of performance and results uh, similar to this as well. Okay, so I mean, today, um, on my time, it's like 12, 12 a.m., but this is like uh, US time based as well. So just keep that in mind. So that's why today is, is less than per normal. It's not the end of the day. So not all the sales uh, come in so far. Okay. So uh, now you can see, right, uh, from this graph over here, um, like start off literally, the business didn't even exist like three weeks ago. Okay. Just, just set up and stuff. Okay. So when you start scaling, uh, you put ad spend into it, right? Uh, we are running through Facebook and stuff before. So for example, you see uh, July 9th, right? We start 56, 465, 178, 74. And then you just slowly, slowly, steadily just scale. So 4K day, 6, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 13, 16, 17. And obviously, there's a small dip here because we're just cutting ad sets uh, uh, in the meantime, right? And then after we cut, then we want to scale back up again. Okay, so I mean, um, you have to think about your business as, okay, how do I scale as fast as possible? And you don't have to take months. You don't have to take a lot of time. That you just need to test message. And when you go into paid traffic, these are the results that you can bring. Okay, so let me show you the back end of the ads manager as well. So um, you can see here, right? Uh, I'm going to refresh for you so there's nothing I, I can hide. Okay, you see lifetime here. This ad account here is fresh. Like it's uh, started only on July 7th. So that's really nothing that, um, uh, yeah, it's really very fresh. Uh, okay, um, so there's actually a cap spending around 250 a day. And then after a while, after you verify the business, then we can start spending a lot more. Now I think we are spending around 3, 4K a day. Uh, so that's the ad spend. We want to increase that over time as well. Okay, so uh, give you a sense of idea of what's happening, right? So for example, on July 15, right? For example, on July 15, right? The ad spend is still very low. Keep in mind, right? So it's like, you see 800 per day, right? And 800 at July 15, uh, that's like 1.3. So the ROAS is like barely uh, even like, it's not even that good. It's not even like a 3X or whatever, right? So you have to keep in mind, like at first when you're testing, you need to be spending money to test the data and to see what's working or not, okay? And uh, you do be, need to be patient. But the thing is also your risk management has to be there, right? So you're spending little to test the market first. And if the market resonates with your message, it means you can scale aggressively, right? Once you, you hit something, right, that um, the your copywriting, your funnel is aligned with what the market wants, it should be very, very easily and it should crack like wildfire, right? So you can see over here, for example, on a July 17, 6K day, right? Um, on July 17, for example, we start launching, we start increasing the ad spend up again, right? 1.8, right? Uh, you want to go to uh, July 22nd, uh, 21st, July 21st, um, July 21st. Okay, so it's 2.9, 2.9, so 6K day. So around a very healthy three to four times row as at that point, right? So then we, once you're scaling July 23rd, July 23rd, uh, so within a two-day time span, you increase the ad spend again. Yep, around 3.8. So you can see, right, it's a very consistent and steady scale. There's something called, um, this is why I realized, okay, uh, on Facebook B, Facebook or Google, there's something called uh, ad account to revenue attribution error. Okay, so for example, on here, right, this could potentially say uh, that the ROAS is 2.29 overall. But in matter of fact, it's more like 3.5. So there's like a discrepancy between uh, the amount of ad spend and the Shopify revenue. And once you establish this relationship, right, it gives you... 100% confidence to scale aggressively as well because you know it's it's literally like a slot machine. You put in money and just money comes back, right? And you can do this over and over again and to scale very, very fast, okay? So like uh, just give you like, I guess a big background uh, about the campaigns as well, for example, right? It's running uh, the big five countries. So the tier one, uh, US, UK, uh, Canada, uh, uh, Australia, uh, and Canada, yeah, I said Canada just now, but basically the, the tier one, big five uh, Facebook countries, right? And you can see here, right? Uh, TOF means top of funnel which is cold traffic. And then uh, MOF is middle of funnel. And then BOF is bottom of funnel, right? So uh, bottom of funnel is like all the, your ad to cuts and stuff like that. The middle of funnel is website visitors, uh, ads, um, video views, 95%. Uh, basically all your warm traffic, right? Facebook, Instagram, and engages, stuff like that. And then obviously um, top of funnel is cold, okay? You can see here one as well, right? This is a level one. Level one is basically our testing campaign. And I'm going to show you how to structure your testing campaign so that you know exactly uh, how to scale aggressively and how to scale uh, very, very clean. So you know exactly 
what creative or copy is working at the same time. Okay, so uh, let me just give it one sec. So for example, okay, so I have my PowerPoint slide right here, right? So um, on July 9th is the first sale that came in. Okay, so I mean from the, the 9th, July 9th to 25th, okay? From the 9th to the 25th, okay? So that, that's 100K right there, okay? So that's basically basically about just getting aggressively, right? Um, okay, so and then these are stats so far, okay? So 36K on ad spend, one to five on 3.4. And keep in mind, like this is the front end. This is front end acquisition. It's not even the back end. There's not much email happening at, at this moment in time as well. So there's a lot more to be done in the future. This, uh, this business can grow very, very massive at the same time, right? And that's basically the power of paid traffic, right? It's literally uh, a cheat code. Like you put a dollar in, you get back, get back two, three dollars out every single time. And if you want to be growing your company and very, very fast, uh, you can advertise any, to anybody in the world at any point in time. So it's almost it's like very, very unfair if you know how to do this and you know how to do it profitably. Because you can come in a market, you can just dominate uh, market share and within like days or even months, right? You can just go and climb to number one, okay? And it's also very liberating for you. So for example, if you're running e-com or running any, any type of business, right? It's very liberating to know that you can go in the market and you can scale your company at will. Meaning as long as you have a credit card and a credit line, you can literally just spend and your company will grow and you're profitable. There's no debt. You don't need to take on uh, debt, you know, that, that you don't have any burden on yourself, right? And it also doesn't have to take years to get this type of scale. You can do it in days, okay? So like, let me just, uh, okay, so the faster you scale, uh, your competitors also don't stand a chance, okay? What I mean by that is because um, this is a game of data, okay? The more data you have, you're going to win, okay? Once you scale into the lookalikes, you will control market share. So let me give you uh, an analogy as well, okay? So for example, um, uh, my competitor decides to come in the market, right? And I'm already spending like, for example, $3,000 per day. I'm re reaching 120,000 people per day, for example, right? And then my competitor decides, okay, uh, this guy is selling this product right here. It looks like it's a lucrative market. He's making money. Let me just try to jump in the back bandwagon, okay? You don't even have to worry about your competitors at that point in time. Because if they're spending merely like $100 per day and they're scared to go to your level, they have no chance whatsoever. We can just ramp up this ad spend. They'll get kicked out of the market. Because um, like... Digital advertising, right? It works as a bid auction. Meaning, right? Um, if I come in the market and I get, I get in in front of the cu the customer, right, on my phone, right, on my feed, for example, right, the other person doesn't get in front of the same customer, right. So I'm essentially outbidding them in the same auction, and basically the first person to the market will always win. The person who is always a more aggressive will always win, because for example, same product, same ads, whatever. I have a bigger budget than you. I'm gonna kill you every single time. You get what I mean? Right, so this is basically it, and I uh, hope you understand that analogy as well. Okay, you can see here as well, this product is not even high ticket. It's a $45 product right here. And basically, we tried increasing the AOV over time. So you can see we implement uh, a few AOV optimization stuff, and slowly from $50 per day, it increased to one two seven per day. Meaning that your profit margins increase, not only that you have more to money to spend on the front end, so you can grow even faster. Okay, and in order for you to do this as well, you must be thinking, how do I add more value to the customer? What else does the customer need so that I can provide more value for them, right? So I can charge more as well, okay? So uh, let me show you what the testing phase looks like. And this is what you need to implement uh, if you want to do this, okay? So on the ad set level, uh, the bigger is better, okay? Try to use a dynamic creative, okay? Um, have, okay, let me just uh, enter this. Okay, so um, you want to be spending per ad set per day, right? More than $50 per day at least, okay? If your product is less than $100, then obviously you can just use $50 per day per ad set. Okay, however, if your product is higher than that, you want to try to increase that amount because um, if you're having, um, for example, three creatives per ad set, right? Um, there's not enough budget to go around and you will be um, making your decisions based on data that is inappropriate, that is inaccurate, that's skewed basically, okay? Uh, for your broad interest, right? You want them to be over one mil all the time. The reason why is because if you vertical scale your ad sets, right? And then your interest size is too small you're going to get um, like a limiting cap, right? There's not enough people to advertise to. And then you just keep uh, recycling the same amount of people, even though they're not buying. So you need to be increasing that, that audience size right there, okay? You also want to try to, um, you can try lookalikes for your uh, interest testing, right? So if you have customer uh, email list, stuff like that, okay? Uh, and you can want to try stacking your, your lookalikes as well. So be it one to 3%, four to 6%, stuff like that, okay? For your broad campaign side, right? You want it to have separate. So if you're running, for example, lookalike testing and then broad testing, you want both campaigns to be separate so that uh, the data is kind of like um, separated. So you can like see whether it's lookalike is doing better or your broad interests are doing better, okay? On your broad interests as well, you want it to be singular 
interest. Okay, what I mean by that is, for example, um, you put um, cameras and then photography, right, in the same ad set, you're gonna like confuse and you don't even know which ad set is performing. So you wanna ad set one, photography, ad set two, cameras. Okay, make sense? Okay, and then on the ad level, this is what I, I normally do. Um, just have three creatives, okay? Three different scroll stoppers and you could literally just do the same video, just change the scroll stopper, super easy stuff. Right. However, if, if the if the creative is not working right, then obviously go and create new creatives and stuff. Okay. Um, okay, for the testing phase, this is really simple. Just don't touch it. Okay. It's gonna be good for your mental health. Okay. Three to four days, let it run, let the data run. Don't even open up ads manager, right? So think about it as like imagine you're trading in a stock market, right? And then once you go into the position and then you're you're going long on the stock, right? And then you just keep looking at the chart, thinking that it'll go up or go down. And then once it goes down, then you get depressed. And then that's gonna be really bad for your mental health, right? However, the next day, um, it, it went up, right? So it actually doesn't matter. You need to have statistical significance. You can't be relying on the emotion here. Uh, you need um, whatever platform you're using, Facebook or Google, to pump budget into it so that you understand what is happening uh, on the ad level itself, okay? To give you a, a visualization of what I mean, okay? This is the testing phase, this is broad, okay? So campaign one, for example, broad, you have docs, pets, golden retriever, for example. Right, spending on dynamic ad set, um, more than fifty dollars per day. Right, then you have three creatives right here. Okay, so you just let this campaign run for three to four full days. Don't touch it at all. Okay, once you're done, then analyze which of these three creatives work the best. Okay, make sense. Okay. Okay, so for example, you you went in there after three or four days, and you realize the the cost per acquisition right is too high. Okay, what do you have to do? Go back to the funnel and find out the copy and the messaging. Okay, so go and find out what works. And then what doesn't? What doesn't work, obviously, just stop doing that. What works, just continuously do that and do a better version of that, okay? However, if you actually can scale, right, your uh, CPA and your rest metric holes within this three to four day time period, start vertical scaling. Vertical scaling means increasing the budget on the ad set level or the campaign level. Basically, uh, increasing budget for that same audience size, okay? Um, okay, so vertical scale, yeah, as I said before, you just ratchet up the ad spend, okay? If ROAS is very strong, right, you can see out the gate, Right, it's like three to four rows, consistently, right? Just one point five to two times your budget, like every single day. Okay, if the rest is not that much, however, uh, you can increase by thirty to forty percent, and obviously slowly vertical scale. Okay, okay, on the horizontal, for example, you can start horizontal scaling as well. So you can um aggressively start launching, uh, your ads into different lookalikes. Right, so purchase uh initial checkout at the cart, uh, video views ninety five percent lookalikes. Okay, and then also launch it into your broad. You can see here, right? Broad um, one mil uh, ad sets. So for example, camera photography, uh, Sony A7 III, uh, Panasonic GH5, stuff like that, you know? D different uh, similar interests to what you already launched to. Okay, there is a, uh, you can switch to CBO as well. So that, that usually works very well. And your ad set level, try to do above more than five mil, right? So this is preparing you for if you, for example, you launched a five to a hundred dollars, uh, five hundred dollars per thousand dollar per day campaign, right? Those broad ad sets can take their that type of budget, and you can scale at will. Okay, um, okay. So this is when uh, this is not a definitive rule, but this is what I've seen. So for example, the Pixel, right? Your ad account have spent like at least fifty k already. Uh, the Pixel is very smart, and they get uh, your target audience very well. Uh, Facebook can find the audience very well. You can try no interest targeting. What I mean by that is literally on the ad set level, you don't even put anything. Let Facebook do its thing, okay? And usually it works. But you need significant spend behind this before this works. Because Facebook needs to find uh, your customer first, right? You need to have uh, many, many purchases that come in before you can do that. Okay, so what, what should you be doing, okay? These are your priorities. These are what you should be spending your time on. Okay, so you know it's working. You know it's scaling already, okay? Try ratcheting up the ad spend, increasing the ad spend and you wanna dominate the market as fast as possible. Okay, once you're spending more than 1K per day on Facebook, for example, go into Google Ads immediately. Okay, be it search shopping, whatever it is, right? Get a backup credit card. So in case your ad account gets banned or whatever, right? Get a backup uh, credit card so that um, the, the the money, the the how much you're, you're spending on the ad spend doesn't stop, okay? Um, yeah, you don't want a situation where your bank calls you and like, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, we don't have that, right? And then they just stop your credit line. Okay, you don't, you don't want that to happen. Okay, call your supplier right now, okay? And then start manufacturing uh, or whatever it is. Don't wait for the fulfillment to break before you scale, okay? If you scale, you need to scale very, very confidently, 
Okay, so you need to be able to fulfill that as well. And if you want to go into private label or whatever, because you are, you know that, okay, we have sales, we can grow this company very fast, stuff like that. Um, just go in private label. Yep. Give your customers the best experience possible. Okay, uh, start buying content, pushing more into original videos and creatives as well. So I won't say reach out to influencers, but reaching out so that um, your product is seen in more people's hands, right? You have more video content to back you up when you scale uh, harder into the lookalikes, right? So this is to prevent and create a moat around your business as well because other people in the space, they don't have content. They're not willing to, to go into content. So you need to push into original content for you to start dominating as well, okay? And then obviously to free up your time as well, start hiring people, okay? You can't do this alone. Uh, it's best to outsource every single thing, okay? You should be focused on strategy. If you're a CEO, you should be focused on high level um, things, okay? And obviously this is easy, cross sell into other niche products, right? So if you know this is working, then you should try to upsell them uh, different things as well because uh, you put so much spend on the pixel already and so that you can uh, you can basically sell the same thing uh, to the same group of people, right? You've essentially acquired the customer already. So it's very, very cheap to sell them similar niche products, okay? And people don't understand this, but like you can't be a one-man team. You need to operate as a business owner, right? You need to be thinking, okay, how do I deploy and employ people who understand the business and can help me grow the business? At that point, it shouldn't be about um, how do I do the work, okay? Yeah, so you need to be thinking about higher, high level things. Okay, my last slide right here. Okay, so what should scaling feel like? Scaling should feel like there is like little to no resistance, okay? However, if you're finding great resistance, right? Like you're like, oh my goodness, I can't scale this. It's like um, the ad spend is not, it's not pushing together with, with, with revenue. It just means the, the messaging is off. The audience is not resonating with the, the message uh, enough, okay? So that is something you need to go back to the drawing board, find out who your customers are, what do they care about? What are the pain points? Stuff like that, okay? Um, yeah, I know it's a bit weird. I don't know what to say, but um, it should feel easy. It shouldn't feel hard to scale. If it feel hard, feels hard, right, then obviously go back to the drawing board, okay? Most often the time, people don't understand that, uh, they don't understand the customer pain very well, okay? And if your cost per acquisition is too high, you need to induce more pain because the more pain they feel, the shorter your conversion cycle and the faster they will buy your product. That is why you can see the numbers that you see, okay? Because the copywriting and the messaging is so strong that um, I call it banger copy, but like basically like the copy hits so hard that like, oh my goodness, I need to give this guy money right now. So those, that, that's the feeling that your customers should feel when um, when you scale, okay? Okay, so if you see this type of momentum, right, you should like easily be able to hit four or 500K per month, very, very easily, okay? Yeah, okay, I hope you gain some value from this video. Uh, if you have any questions and stuff, like please, um, you can put them down. I don't know where this will be posted, but you can put them down uh, down below. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it and gave you some insight uh, on, on what to do and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Yep. Yeah. Okay.